if you're just wondering why you know people are being so prayerful out there, it's because of uh, it's the only way we can beat that snake, the black snake, and it's because we're going to be in prayer and do it all the right way instead of um, taking out a whole bunch of cops or like getting taken out by a whole bunch of cops. Um, so right now, all the like smart natives are doing like all the legal work and stuff, and, and getting like. Um, it halted left and right, the Army Corps was stopping it for a little bit. But they're still like out there working every day, preparing it for whenever they do get that lease. So it is like happening right now, and they try to like give you some media where it's like, oh, we're winning, but um, it's still a fight out there, and they do need as much people as they can out there. I've told many of my friends that like, don't go out there and it's not no filter. You may get cold or something, uh, uh, pneumonia. It's real out there, it's super cold. And um, and then you're like, not thinking, you're almost like not wanting to eat because you're going through so much stress every day. So it's a real thing out there. You're, you're literally starving, your energy is being depleted every day. The only thing that is sacred out there is the prayers and ceremonies. That's the only thing that's getting those warriors that are out there every night. So when I'm out there, I stood out there in the daytime, and I went out there a few times. But there's real warriors out there not leaving the front line. They're camping out there, and they're going out there whenever the elders let them. Because the elders will tell you to come, all come back and pray sometimes. And then they'll get on the big mic like this and be all, all warriors to the front line! Serious, and wake you up at 4 in the morning doing that. And you get up, and you run up there, and it's, it's one of the beautiful things you've ever seen. Everybody starts... Rushing to the front line and there's hundreds of people jumping in cars, all these warriors hanging out the windows and back of the trucks doing war hoops. Woo -hoo -hoo! And everybody's just like, so it's like, for me it gave me nothing but goosebumps all the time. And I sat there and I could have, had to hold back tears and cry like nonstop because for me growing up around here um, with the Kilma stuff, I didn't have much native um, influence except for some of my local Northwest natives. And so to be back there with the Plains people, my cousin tried to see it was like really intense for me to um, witness that and be a part of that. It was an honor. It'd be as a Northern Cheyenne, but just for anybody to be out there and support, doesn't matter what race and color you are, to be out there and fight against like the bigger cause. It's even like a prophecy, you know, from the Hopi, that we will conquer the black snake. So there's tons of reasons to be out there just to be human. Water is life, right? But it is also sacred ground out there, and, and you wouldn't want to see your brothers and sisters of humanity get their families grazed, bulldozed, and disrespected. You don't want to see your your friends, fellow humans, mothers and nieces get bear grizzly sprayed in the face and baton for praying because they want to move the line out from where you were praying. And mind you, it's all treaty land, it's broken treaty land. There's tons of this, like, tons of indigenous ways to go about it. Past water is life, and we gotta just support the millions of people downstream. That is what's bringing a lot of people's attention to, the, um, to this fight. And seeing the elders and the children being disrespected, that's what's bringing attention to the fight. It's not a whole bunch of gun warriors down there painting their face, going down there and wanting to create stuff. But they are there. I saw the staff of security come into the come into the area and straight try to take pictures of the um, of this equipment that was on fire. That some of the agitators, these warriors, want to go out and pour gasoline on the dapple equipment. Like woo! But you're still like it's not a prayerful thing. It's, you're giving them an excuse to give you a rioting ticket or something. Like, do something like. Um, and all these charges, mind you, are collecting on the tribe, the, the, the Dakota Sioux and, and the Standing Rock Sioux. Um, the warriors just get the, a direct charge if they get caught, but when they do big things like that and set dapple equipment on fire, it's charged the tribe. And all these charges are built build up, so I'm just really trying to be a voice for the um, elders that want people out there to protect and be there in prayer for thing and not go out there with these intentions. And, be super crazy and like, cause that's what we kind of want to feel like, you know? We want to be like, man, like if you're a Vietnam vet or something, you want to go out there and be like, man, I'm an army guy, I'm gonna do something. But no, it's all about peace and prayer. So that's what I want to say is um, a little story about when I went there is uh, 
saw this doppel guard come in and take pictures and he, he was uh, dressed as a um, protector, he had a rag over his face and, and uh, he was driving erratically so people were like, what's going on with this guy? And they ran up to his window and they noticed that there's an AR in his lap, a rifle, fully on, like fully like um, deadly weapon, you know? And so they tried to stop him and he took off through the crowd and almost ran over at uh, protectors and we went out there on the road praying. And they stopped and he got stopped and he got forced out of his car and he was um, aiming his gun at the um, warriors trying to calm him down and he backed himself out into the um, out into this marshy water thing. I don't know if you've seen his pictures, but um, he was pointing the gun ready to shoot if anything like scare him or whatever. But anyway, they um, grabbed his truck and um, found out he had a Dapple ID, so it was a Dapple security guard. And yet, and the truck was registered to the Dakota Access Pipeline. Um, all the warriors that, well, at the moment, was so like powerful, like I was proud of it. But what they did is they jumped in the truck, drove it in front of like the um, where the cops were trying to come down, set the truck on fire. And, uh, and I was like, man, this is crazy. Like, I've never seen this. Like I said, like, I've watched the LA riots on TV, but to be there and like see this truck blow up, not like the movies, but blow up, the windows blow out and stuff, and it was a diesel truck with a full tank. It was crazy. And then didn't have these protectors throw their car, this little um, smart car. All these protectors ripped off the license plate, grabbed this little smart car, Threw it upside down on top of the other truck, as well as like tons of logs. And I, mean, I was a picture of me standing in front of that, like going like, "Wow, what's going on with this?" Like, I couldn't believe it. I was, uh, I had, I was trying to be there for my brethren and Grizzly to see if anybody was hurt and try to pull them out back to camp. That's the only thing I knew to help was the security and the security um, people trying to bring people out that got maced or hurt. Um, so I was, I was just like with my goggles looking around the whole time. Um, but uh, there's different ways to be involved. Like I said, you don't even have to go out to the front line. You could be really helping out. So there's constant fry bread <laughs> back at camp. And uh, there's people, there's a fire that needs to go be going all the time. There's tons of things that you could, respectful things you could do at man camp. Um, and then take a day out to go out and pray on the front line. But, it's just like one of the biggest, craziest communities we've ever seen. Bigger than this valley. Like, there's thousands of people there. Like, when I first moved there, I was like, oh, this is cool. But when he woke up the next day, so I got there hell early in the morning, slept in the truck, and when I woke up in the morning to see, like, the whole horizon with teepees and tents and people and up on the main, main hill, um, all these different camps. It was like something, it's history, yo. And for me, it's like, like I said, he's a native, a super, super crazy and honor. But just to be out there and protect people and their rights and, and fight for something, a good cause and, and all that too. You're like, I'm half Irish too, so just to be like a kill my scary kid, <laughs> um, natives put aside, was, was just super honor. And um, it's just intense, like I didn't come home, I have an anxiety problem and stuff. Naturally, I'm not scared, no, no shame in my game. But I came back with extra, I came back with like some post-traumatic stress disorder because now when I see these white security trucks around the valley, I think they're dapple and I get um, anxious and I start freaking out. Um, just went up to Hyatt Lake to, um, and they had the roadblocks and all these security trucks and stuff and they're locking up there. I went through a four-wheeler yesterday. <clears throat> and we went through the property and I saw all these beautiful trees being cut down. And, you know, it reminded me that there's a fight everywhere. And, and uh, they kicked us off the property, but I was like, I'm out here having fun. But I'm gonna say, you know, I'm, I'm actually gonna stay because now I'm protesting this shit. Now I'm protecting this, you know what I mean? So, like this logger came out, um, tried kicking us out, and um, man, this gave me like this super like anxiety feeling afterwards, like man, there's people like that are trying to like take your resources and your, and your land, and they're everywhere. You know, with the Klamath and the Smith River with the, the, with the fish and the dams and, and stuff and Oak Flat, um, Mauna Kea, like everywhere. There's fights to be involved with everywhere. And me, this is my first big fight to go out there and actually do something and be a part of it. 
And I just want to let you know that like um, this, it's not done with um, Dakota Access Pipeline. It's going to be a, a lifeline flight for me, and should be for you guys. And to be involved with this, it's going to be monumental because we're finally getting like coverage on NBA, NBC, and finally like getting like it out there. You know, it was trending on Facebook for a while too. And now like whack stuff is trending on Facebook right now. I don't even want to be on Facebook. Um, but yeah, and also I'm not just keep prayer. Like we are our own people, and we're 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 not like with the Trump thing. You know, it hurts me. Like I woke up in the middle of the night with like with something bad on my mind, and I looked and it almost felt like it wasn't real. Like because I I haven't been watching that. I'm not really into that. So when it was like, oh, he's running. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I like that's cool, and I saw him in The Simpsons. I'm like, oh yeah, it'd be funny if he did win, cause it was like that. And so like to see it last night, and have my gut, my heart just drop, and really just realize that this is true, that Trump is our president. And uh, like I don't know, it just really tripped me out on how how really washed down this society is nowadays, and how like rat races and this and stuff. Like grew up as like a kind of a, a um, you know good-minded. Uh, positive thinking, like spiritual youth from Tequila, like I had good parents that, you know, into reggae and good energy vibes, so I, I was raised in that positive kind of atmosphere. So growing up like that, and to have such washed down president and like this crazy stuff going on in the road right now, um, it's kind of like a wake up call for me as an artist to do something and speak more, and actually be more of a voice. and. It's, uh, I've been thinking about like these issues in my music for a while, if anybody noticed. <laughs> but um, now it's, my music means more to people and myself now when we're fighting for things and people are standing up for um, these, these uh, things that happen to us as people. You know, and we are a mix. This is the United States. If you really take that to heart, we're all like unified in this shit. I've always been saying one tribe black. You know, I'm half Irish and I grew up in like a crazy like redneck hippie kind of um, valley and I've been friends with everybody and I've never like told anybody or you know I just, I, I'm all about that one try vibe is what I'm trying to say and so we just need to stick together as people and if you feel honored about doing anything involved with Standing Rock um, I just want to let you know that I want to thank you for being out there and seeing the people that really need help out there and then also coming back and seeing people who really passionate like Rebecca doing stuff for the people and stuff that hasn't even been there but she has that calling you know um I just uh, I want to um let's give a warm applause uh, for uh, Rebecca for being us yeah. yeah. and uh, I just want to say I'm a lot better on, with my music on the mic not really talking <laughs> But I just want to say thank you for listening. It's just a little um, something to share. It was intense out there. Um, and also in TPs. Um, <laughs> but uh, um, yeah, just uh, have strong prayers, you know, because it's not really about donations or any of that really right now. I was there and seen these huge, giant army tents with everything you need in them. And um, then I seen out on the front line these native Sioux kids with like, shirts on. And, they're like, what? I just not. Really, I don't need that. That's for that's for wimps. <laughs> so and then you see like a you know brethren from Ashland down there with a Eskimo coat on and and so all these gloves and stuff. You know, so just have your intentions and your um and really help the people out there. And if you're gonna be out there and have all that super nice gear, be a part and be on the front line and use it. You know what I mean? Like um, I've seen like being on both sides. I've seen a lot of native people be like. Look at this guy, man. He can't even walk. He's so warm. Yeah. <laughs> so he's like, you know what I mean? Like, really just, um, um, just have good intentions there and stay in prayer. Like I said, it's not about what you have to give. It's what you um, have to offer as a medicine and prayer. And um, that's important right now. We really need it. Send that attention to the atmosphere. And if you can help, um, there are people like me and a couple other people from Oregon that will make sure that like that stuff gets to the right people. When I um, did a benefit, I raised seven thousand dollars in Williams for um, Stanley Rock. I got a whole bunch of um, donations. 
And uh, I brought um, generators over there, um, sub, sub zero sleeping bags. Um, went to the army surplus and bought all these really bomb wool blankets. I got the real good stuff because enough times I heard people say, I got holes in my pockets and like they're, they've got too much clothes up there with holes and stuff, you know what I mean? Like a, a brother wants to give him a coat, but man, he, they, they're not gonna use that, they're not gonna want it, you know what I mean? Cause they actually have like companies like Cool bringing like brand new snow work coats up there and stuff. And so like, don't hurt your heart about trying to help financially. It's really about prayer, you know what I mean? But there's people oh. that go up there and try to like, um, bring good medicine and good good um, reinforcement up there and that's what Rebecca's doing. So supporting this and with any kind of money or donations is a good cause. And she's going over to my brother Grizzly from up uh, by Salem and he's like when he got there he was right on security right away. He gave him an arm aim American Indian movement band and he was protecting right away. So to, for her to go up there with one of the like, strongest warriors on the front line right now um, is good. And so like Anything that you support her on is going to get there and it's going to get to the right people. So with that, I just want to say thank you for coming out and supporting us. It's for a good cause. And if you didn't contribute anything, just contribute prayer tonight in this whole, this, why this is happening until this black thing is gone. You know, um, just be there um, in spirit too. You know what I mean? You don't have to go down there. Just be, take that time out of the day and burn something, lay down some tobacco. And just be there for... Um, the people out there, they're getting hurt. I've seen it, you know, and it's not just physical stuff. I'm telling you, post-traumatic stress disorder and stuff like that is no joke. I left, I got hit with a um, sound cannon, and uh, I've had migraines every day since, and um, I've crazy anxiety from it, you know? And my only feeling to like, soothe this adrenaline I have inside is to go back. Uh, so I feel restless and useless being home when I should, you know, mission accomplished. I made money, I went there. But once you're there and you see the stuff that's happening, you want to be more involved. So if you do have a calling inside, it's true. It's, it's like, when you get there, there's even more enforcement to that. You're like, yo, I, I should be here. You know, and uh, as long as you're respectful, it doesn't matter what color you are, man. Just be there and be a part of The elders will love you for being doing that. Help in the kitchen, do whatever you can at camp, or go on the front line. Be prepared to get arrested and, and get a felony writing thing on you. You know what I mean? But you go into the front line, maybe the maybe, uh, elder won't get arrested. I don't know. There's the more people power and force, the cops ain't going to rush up and try to grab people. Because they're intimidated. They're scared that we are going to do something. You see, you see these fearful cops, and they also don't even want to be there. You look in their face, especially you see the Native brothers and the Mexican and Black brothers in there standing there. They want to hide and put face masks on because they they don't want to see. They they've been their people have been oppressed, and they don't want to be a part of this. They, they just what to get a paycheck. So um, you know, there's a lot of stuff out there that. Um, is happening and it's bad. And, and so just be honored that you're here and, and having some love towards this movement. It's a real thing and um, they need your support. That's all I'm saying. Much love, everybody. Um, I'm going to do a set. My cousin will do a set. And uh, we're, you know, we're going to end it with a prayer and send it out there, you know, and have some food and stuff. So, oh. In my language, means thank you. <laughs>